For the last three years, former Navy officer Michael Seaborn has been perplexed by a health condition that no doctor can seemingly explain. Just four months after working as part of the cleanup effort of the Fukushima nuclear meltdown, Seaborn woke up and found that he could no longer push or pull with his right arm. And he would later find out that his arm had been quickly losing muscle mass. Same with my right leg. My right leg is actually 17 centimeters smaller than my left leg. Uh, so I'm basically just kind of deteriorating from the right side. They're, they're trying to figure out why that is. Doctors are still trying to diagnose Seaborn after more than a dozen medical visits and countless neurological exams. And although it's been hard to detect, Seaborn now believes the culprit is radiation. It's carcinogenic, it's mutagenic, it, it causes mutations, it causes birth defects, uh, it damages uh, DNA, and um, if you have a radiological uh, isotope uh, lodged in your uh, body, in soft tissue, uh, in bone marrow, um, this is the uh, concern where you get long-term exposures. That's the reality now facing countless U.S. sailors and Marines who acted as first responders to the Fukushima disaster. Many of the service members who provided that humanitarian relief were aboard the USS Reagan. And in the three years since, dozens of them, merely in their 20s and 30s, have already been diagnosed with ailments like leukemia, testicular cancer, and thyroid disease. Now they're part of a growing class action lawsuit against the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, also known as TEPCO. The suit alleges that the power company provided false information to U.S. Navy officials about the extent of the radioactive contamination spreading into the air and water. And while service members say TEPCO is by and large to blame, questions are surfacing regarding exactly how much the Navy may have known about the radiation, especially considering the kind of equipment aboard the USS Reagan, a nuclear-powered ship. There is lots of radiation detectors, both uh, fixed in position to monitor the um, the radioactivity from the reactor itself, a propulsion reactor, and also lots of Geiger counters. So um, we're quite sure that the Navy was aware of the radioactivity, um, but that was not being communicated to the sailors that were in harm's way. However, the U.S. Navy denies that allegation. In fact, the Pentagon says it studied the available data on radioactive levels and that that information was reviewed by a non-governmental group. In a statement to RT, a spokesperson for the Navy said the worst case radiation exposure for a crew member on the USS Ronald Reagan is less than 25 percent of the annual radiation exposure to a member of the U.S. public from natural sources of background radiation such as sun, rocks and soil. But Seaborn says that math just doesn't add up. During the Fukushima cleanup effort, he was responsible for measuring radiation exposure to equipment and to U.S. personnel. That was my job. So to say that it's uh, normal day-to-day -day radiation is 100% is bogus. Seaborn and his colleagues were measuring the amount of exposure in what's called CCPMs, or corrected counts per minute. A normal background radiation from the sun, the rocks, you know, smashing a banana in your hand, is about 15 to 30 CCPMs. At one point in, in Atsugi, I was reading three to 400 CCPM just in the air. But unfortunately, that level of exposure will be difficult to prove because while Navy officials told Seaborn his radiation measurements would be logged and attached to his medical records, that simply never happened. So with disputed facts and differing accounts, Seaborn, like his fellow first responders, will have to wait for his day in court while hoping to find the answers to his unexplainable illness. Amira David, RT.